It all started with a dream. I used to dream about rescuing animals and starting my own sanctuary. And one day I mentioned that to somebody and they said, why aren't you doing it? And I said, I'm gonna do it when I retire. I was in my 20s then. And they said, why are you waiting? And I thought, I don't know why. So I just started the sanctuary. Next thing I knew, I'm in Mahopany with 50 animals, and soon that 50 was 100, and I was getting up every morning and feeding and cleaning and watering and running back in the house and working on the computer to pay the bills and running back outside and taking care of the animals in between. When I look into their eyes and they look into mine, they're reacting to my truest self, my real self. They're reacting to the best parts of me. And I find myself being the best person that I can be so that I can live up to what they see. Aside from the hard work in the early years, I spent a lot of time observing them. Their beauty and their wisdom never ceased to amaze me. I learned and grew so much during that time As I learned and healed and grew, I realized that I had to share this opportunity with others, that others needed the chance to experience the animals for themselves. I was trying to keep the dream alive until help came along. I truly believe that when you're committed to doing something good, the universe conspires to help you. And then the help to manifest this dream started showing up. I got the help I needed, and then some. I always thought it would just be me and the animals. I didn't really think about the future and how it would get paid for, how we would move forward. I just love the intimacy of those days. When the legions of kids started showing up, I knew we were onto something. I realized that their minds and hearts were open when they were around the animals, and they asked all kinds of questions, great questions, and questions that gave me the opportunity and their teachers the opportunity to teach them things that they were not interested in in the classroom. And it dawned on me, this is a curriculum begging to be created. This is the future of education with kindness at its core. My nature is to be alone and I wanted to be alone, but after having spent so much time alone with the animals, I understood that I had to share this opportunity for compassion and healing with many others, especially children. I saw the way that the kids were blossoming under the care and love of the animals. And I saw the way that the animals were blossoming with the care and love of the kids. And I realized we need them more than they need us. But mostly, we need each other. When I was a lost, hurt little girl, it was the animals that saved me. And today we have the opportunity to provide so many kids the chance to connect with animals in need. And by the way, this experience speaks to the kids in all of us. Soon, we'll have the proper facilities to do so. I first
first met Marisol on the streets of Acapulco. She dragged herself out from underneath the bushes and landed at my feet. A little bag of bones and fleas, two broken back legs. I scooped her up and was lucky enough to find a wonderful, compassionate veterinarian who put her back together again, rebuilt her back legs, and in six months she was ready to travel. She came home to Indraloca. From the streets of Mexico to living the life of a sanctuary dog, beloved and loved every second of it, I remember the first time she saw snow. There was no fear, nothing but but joy and excitement and, and curiosity. Marisol was a friend to all who visited. She was our unofficial greeter. Everybody was received with kindness, gentleness, and love, whether you were human or non-human. She welcomed everyone the same. The new 100-acre property featured an old farmhouse that we promptly set up as a yoga studio and art gallery for visitors. Directly across the street, the historic barn is perfect for an education center and event space. Soon after we arrived, friends and neighbors appeared to offer their support, help, and blessings for the new project. The property is a dream come true. We loved exploring it and discovering how it was teeming with abundance, beauty, and wildlife. Marisa loved running and exploring the new fields. For now, she had the whole property all to herself and she was loving every minute of it. Nothing compares to the joy of a free being. Her joy put an indelible mark on the property that could never be wiped away. But very quickly, as fall approached, Marisol became ill and lost her vitality almost overnight. She slowed down a lot and then stayed indoors, and she laid down and stopped eating. By mid-fall, despite having lost all energy, she asked to go outside one last time. She visited all her favorite spots. And looked out over the fields. And she said goodbye to the land and moved to the next stage. The walks were definitely lonelier without Marisol. Losing her was hard. But she blessed this property, and I was determined to take her spirit of love and welcome and tenderness and compassion into the future and make it part of the fabric of who we are. Thanks Living 2018 at the new property was the best one ever. People turned out in force. They were excited to welcome us to our new community. The article in the Sunday Times showed me clearly that the community understands and embraces the importance of compassion and wants to be a part of our mission. And so, the future is now. Thanks to the help of many people, 
we've been able to build some barns, enough to start moving animals from our old location. Welcome to the Tau Barn, home to our beloved bovines. Finally, we're ready for them, knowing that the barn will never be this clean again. Moving day has arrived. Our youngest cows, Nanda and Rachel, were the first to move in. They were nervous at the change, but excited to see their big green pasture. It was wonderful to see their reactions each time a new family member arrived. <coughs> Young and old, it was good to bring everyone safely home. We celebrated with a ribbon cutting during Thanksgiving of 2019. People came from miles away to celebrate turkeys and chickens by feeding them a feast. which we've named the Art Barn. It's a great place for education and events. Now let's visit the sheep, goats, and our beloved elderly pigs. Barns were specifically designed with rescued farm animals in mind. They love their insulated beds, where they stay cozy on cold winter nights and cool on hot summer days. Nugget seems content. There's plenty of room for the goats to enjoy playing pranks on each other and us. It's been our pleasure to give you a glimpse today of our nearly 300 rescued farm animals. We hope you'll meet the rest of them soon, either in person or online. And happy Earth Day!